Hey everyone. So today Meta announced that they've been working on a project that makes it possible to take prompts um, similar to what you do with DALI or Stable Diffusion and turn that into full-on video. So the techniques here aren't completely novel. Uh, obviously it's more advanced than what you've been able to see from some of the perceptual video that's been created with Stable Diffusion uh, and then some of the, also the videos uh, that have been made with DALI, which predominantly are made with the zoom out effect and fill. So the idea is um, you feed an image, you zoom out, and then DALI infills what it thinks uh, the larger context text of that image is. So this video really isn't, isn't about the Facebook portion of this. Um, it's cool, definitely a little rough around the edges, but uh, it's cool to see that the idea and concept definitely works. Um, it's not publicly available yet, and you can sign up for access, uh, I already have. Um, and later in the video, I'll get into a service uh, I'm putting together, it's an API and something you can sign up for, uh, that will automatically sign you up for public releases of AI uh, generative content, um, and also do some things to give you a better edge contextually. So. Stay tuned for that. So yeah, the, the whole idea here is uh, making video generatively with AI with text. Um, some of these videos are pretty creepy, like this one with the bear painting a bear. Uh, that's that's creep creeping me out for sure. And yeah, they show how you can take a static image and then interpolate it and add context. Um, this I think is the most interesting aspect of this because you're taking a static image um, without really a lot of context. Um, you can add some, um, but the cool thing is this is an, it's an AI looking at image, perceiving it in a certain way, perceiving pretty you know core attributes as to what kind of action is going on in an image. So it's not just saying, is this a boat? Is this a person? It's saying this is a boat in a frothy ocean during a storm. Um, and then having to work all of that out. And then turning that into video is a whole other thing that's pretty interesting. So yeah, some cool stuff going on here. And there's a link to this so you can read about this in the description. Um, it'll be curious to see how well this can handle um, procedural video like this with small particles and then more so uh, smaller, less descriptive, more open-ended prompts, which um, I think are kind of cool. You can tell like with a lot of um, simpler models, um, the video with a lot of context that it could, you can really draw from and narrow down on is easier for it to generate. So you get closer to copying than really generating, um, which is another interesting side of this. So they talk about quality here. Um, I'm gonna be going over this paper in another video. I think, uh, the notion of quality and interpolation is really a personal opinion. Um, artists have some really interesting ways of articulating this. And uh, hopefully in the future, I'll be able to bring some artists on to talk about this. Oh, and then down here, this is where it, so it says, uh, want to make a video, you can sign up. Um, this has only been released today, so no one knows uh, how open they are to granting access to normal people as opposed to just researchers. Generally, the way this goes um, early on, they're far more interested in artists and researchers, um, less so developers, because they usually think people who are developing per se on this will just be looking for ways to monetize. And that's kind of a hassle for them. But uh, that's not what this video is about. What this video is about uh, is something that was very, re like m minutes ago, pushed to GitHub and a friend of mine at MIT sent this over. Um, since it piqued his interest. And so you can see this was pushed up publicly about an hour ago. Um, and what this is, is this is um, a seemingly novel method that claims to be an implementation of make a video um, similar to what Meta has done uh, in PyTorch. And you can see about as of making this, uh, 82 people have seen this and have really looked into it. And uh, yeah, I've set this up. I'm gonna play around with it today and then hopefully get a video up of me actually using this. But um, the process here is still similar to what is done in Stable Diffusion when you're just feeding in a 
uh, not an infinite set of images, but when you're, when you're feeding the output of a prior frame as the input of a next frame and then constraining how you'd like to create the next frame. Um, so here they explain this as the architecture and the initialization scheme, which is what you're feeding in as you know, an input image of the previous frame of the pseudo 3D convolutional and the tension layers enabling the seamless transition of a pre-trained text to image model to the temporal dimension, which basically just means looking a fixed amount into the future or generating something that you aren't entirely sure of what it is. Um, so they say each spatial 2D convolutional layer is followed by a temporal 1D con convolutional layer. The temporal convolutional layer is initialized with an, identif an, an identity function. Temporal attention layers are applied following the spatial attention layers by initializing the temporal projection to zero, resulting in an identity function of the temporal tension blocks. So that's a lot of really complex big words. In simple terms, glossing over some of the AI terms here, what this means is that this model claims to have a better function or a better means of construing context frame to frame and then making that temporal idea or what it thinks it wants the video to, is, it, to be, be more cohesive over a longer period of time. So for instance, um, if you look at some of the animations per se that came from Stable Diffusion, they look like a series of images loosely stitched together with um, a overly applied transition between them. Uh, lo loosely, the reason this happens is because um, the model only can think to the next frame. It's not thinking to a function of the next 30 frames or, a, or an average diff change in direction whatever it thinks that direction is over the next 30 frames, which could be a second, could be two seconds, um, just depends on how many frames in a video you want. So yeah, I, I'm eager to play around with this. Um, it's not really that complex. Uh, I mean, obviously the math is, but it, it's effectively just a, a PyTorch model, which is really cool. And um, yeah, I'll make another video here and uh, for those of you who are still watching, uh, I don't have a name for it yet, but uh, I got kind of tired of having to aggregate, sign up, and then track my progress for uh, these generative AI platforms. So I wrote a script that just does it, and then I have a group chat in Discord of a few friends of mine who are much smarter than me at MIT that just dump links in, and it just signs up for them. And I figured other people might find value in that. So leave a comment below if you have a suggested name or you want to sign up for it. And uh, yeah, hope everyone has a solid day.